came about singing through just being in a musical family, I think, and always singing as a child. Uh, also growing up in church, and I had a lot of involvement in the, in the worship team in church, so it was always a part of like everyday life for me. And uh, I think uh, growing up and uh, in my teen years, I just really realized that it was a passion and something I wanted to pursue more uh, professionally. So I started having singing lessons, and then I studied it uh, at university as well, studied music. Yeah, there are many challenges, I think, in any creative pursuit. Uh, one thing that uh, I think I'm really proactive in trying to change is the fact that, it, you know, when you're a female in the music industry, it's quite a male-dominated industry, and um, there might be a perception that you have to like, push a lot harder and work a lot harder. I think. I think that has been true in the past, and um, I've definitely experienced it at some points in my career. But for now, um, I guess the message I'm trying to put across, especially with my Lao Strong movement, is that uh, we are all equals, and us females can actually demand and have the same expectations from uh, bands or in terms of the pay that we should be getting and all of that. So while there are challenges there in the music industry, and it's something I've faced, it's something that I'm trying to say is um, not acceptable and we're going to try and change it together. So we all need to shift our mentality on that and something I'm still working towards. Seeing uh, Itoke music and I've always loved singing Fijian songs because of the story, because of the lyrics and the connection that we have with those lyrics. And it started from uh, just singing around the cover ball. Every time I would sing uh, that famous song, Dal Manikila, people would be almost moved to tears. So I realized quite early on that there's something meaningful there. Um, and coming into my own original Fijian music, uh, which is written by my partner, with my partner, he's helped a lot with the lyrics and he's been writing me poetry that I can put to music. Um, this this really came to light with Kala Kala Wala Singer, that um, like there's hundreds of comments on YouTube, people just saying thank you so much, this really touched me, or you know they really related to it, and I think they love the originality of it as well. So um, yeah, telling stories through music is really it's a very important thing as a singer. If we don't want to um, sing songs that we even connect with, then there's not much point, you know. So I always try to tell young budding singers, you know, you have to connect to the lyrics first. Um, and I have a new song coming out, Totokani Ramu, and the lyrics are written by uh, PJ as well, my partner. And that one is, um, it's a really meaningful song as well. I mean, these are love songs. You could say it's um, a bit indulgent because <laughs> I know that he wrote a couple of these ones for me, but um, I think they're relatable on all levels and a lot of people will connect to them. Uh, Lao Strong Movement is something I started last year. It came about from actually um, a major incident that happened in my life where I was assaulted by somebody uh, in an unexpected situation, a public, public place. Yeah, and uh, from, you know, when, whenever you have uh, a big incident in your life, I think there's always change and, um, you know, there was some enlightenment through it all and I realized, like, I guess uh, this is not okay. First of all, domestic violence is not okay, but this was um, a female being violent to a female and to me that just shows a pattern that they've grown up with. And I think in the islands we, we see it a lot because, you know, it's still often the way their parents discipline their kids and I'm not saying that there's no space for that but there's definitely got to be boundaries and we have to be role models as parents and we should stop uh, saying that it's acceptable to always use violence as the answer. But also I think we need to teach our boys how to treat girls. You know, so it starts at home and I, I just started this movement. It came about from a lot of things, but I think the assault was just kind of like that uh, little bit of a boost that I needed to to start the movement and I called it Lawa Strong. Um, it's really, it's taken off, it took off really quickly. People started hashtagging it and there were frames you could put on your profile picture. Uh, I wrote a song and uh, performed it at the Uprising Festival and yeah, released it. And uh, people really would say that um, it was resonating with them on so many levels because, you know, many things like gendered roles, like, oh, well, I didn't think I could ever be a pilot or an engineer, or, you know, this, they might say that to me. And then some women said, you know, this really empowered me to leave uh, a domestic violence situation I was in, or, you know. Um, but also just all of my, uh, my friends who are in, similar to me, they've got young kids, and raising our boys, you know, just to actually value the women in their lives and to empower them rather than disempower them. 
So that's what Lao Strong is all about. I have actually done a few rooftop gigs <laughs> around the world. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think this is a really exciting one and this is something new, I think, for Suva. I've always said we should have rooftop uh, bars here, you know, because we've got the view, we've got the harbour there, and um, I never imagined that it would happen at CFL, but I'm really excited about it. Uh, I can't wait to be part of it, and when I got invited, I was on board straight away. So, yeah, this is something to watch out for.